people look different from one another. So do animals. Come on. One of the ways in which we all differ is color. Come on. Imagine a world in which everything were the same color. Rather dull, isn't it? But color is part of our world. Just as there are thousands of shades of birds, so there are thousands of shades of people. Scientists usually divide people into three main groups, based largely on skin color. The Negro, or black race, the mongoloid, or yellow race, and the Caucasian, or white race. Actually, the labels black, white, and yellow are exaggerations. That one up there. A member of the yellow race isn't really yellow. Any more than a member of the black race is really black. And white is not really the color of a white boy. Although people may look very different, everyone's skin color is made of the same few ingredients. The chief one is a brown pigment. We look different because of the amount of pigment we each have in our skin, eyes, and hair. How much money you got? Imagine that these pennies are particles of brown skin pigment. If you have a few of them, and they are far apart, your skin will be of a light color. If you have more, your skin will look somewhat darker. And if you have many particles of pigment arranged closely together, your skin will look almost solidly brown. I've got all pennies. Although our skin may not look alike, we are all really colored from the same material. What determines the color you are? Skin color is inherited. When a baby is conceived, he receives 23 chromosomes from each parent. The chromosomes, which determine a person's physical traits, are made up of thousands of tiny chemical structures called genes. The genes largely determine what we will look like, including the color of eyes and hair. Some genes also determine skin color. The darkest Negroes have the most active brown pigment genes. The lightest whites have genes which produce the least brown pigment. When parents are of different colors, the children's skin generally tends to be somewhere in between. And since most parents are not exactly the same color, 
children of all shades are constantly being created. Basically, in the way our bodies are constructed, we are all the same. Though, superficially, we may look quite different. <laughs> Compare an African oryx and a zebra. They not only look different, they are different. They belong to different species and cannot mate. Even a dromedary and a Bactrian camel, though they look very similar, can never be more to each other than neighbors in a zoo. Take a walrus and a seal. They swim in the same water, yet they are so basically different from each other that they cannot produce offspring. But almost any pair of human beings, anywhere in the world, no matter how varied their color and appearance, can produce children, for we are all members of the same species. Regardless of where we live and what we look like, we have all descended from a common ancestor. If we all have the same ancestor, you may wonder why we don't all look alike today. Part of the answer may be seen here at the zoo. Hey! Where's Brian? I don't know. I just saw him. Come on, we better find him. saw me looking at him and told me this was a rare breed. At first there were just a few, but now there are a lot of them. The white wolf is the result of a mutation, a change in heredity. Occasionally a change occurs in a gene, causing a new trait to appear. In this case, a white wolf was born to gray wolf parents. The silver fox is another mutation. He turned up one day among a family of red foxes. Just a chance mutation. But sometimes changes that occur by chance turn out to serve a useful purpose. Take the bottle-nosed dolphin, for instance. Scientists believe that a long time ago, dolphins probably lived on land. They are warm-blooded, air-breathing mammals. Their intelligence is surpassed only by that of man. Today, however, they live only in water and look a great deal like fish. Through chance mutations, dolphins must have developed flippers where their front legs used to be, and a powerful tail better suited to getting around in water than hind legs. Unlike fish, who have scales, dolphins have skin, which, through millions of years, has adapted to the water. So in the case of dolphins, chance mutations served a practical purpose and were retained. In the case of people, scientists tell us, mutations must also have occurred. Over a long period of time, the result was different races. So, based on all available evidence, here is the way many scientists see the development of races. The first recognizable men developed somewhere in Africa between one and two million years ago. Since man lived in the tropics, he was quite probably dark-skinned and dark-haired, the coloring that would have given him the most natural advantages. It is from man very much like this, that we are all descended. From Africa, man's increasing population spread throughout Asia and Europe. 
in time, mutations occurred, and where advantageous, they were retained. Probably a chance mutation produced the first light-skinned man. In the North, such coloring was an advantage, allowing the weak sun to penetrate his skin more easily to produce needed vitamin D. Therefore, the white race became centered generally in the North. In Africa, on the other hand, dark skin gave natural protection against the burning sun. Here, the Negro race became concentrated. Meanwhile, in Eastern Asia, the Mongoloid people developed. Perhaps the change in skin color from brown to yellow was a random mutation. Other racial changes, however, proved an advantage in the colder climates, such as well-padded cheeks and stockier bodies to conserve body heat. Long ago, a land bridge existed between Asia and the Americas. The early Mongoloids crossed it and spread over the continents of the Western Hemisphere. This explains how the Eskimos, the North American, and the South American Indians belong to the Mongoloid race. So from a common ancestor in Africa, over a long period of time, all the human races developed. If people gradually changed once they found themselves in a new climate, you may wonder if they are not still changing today. Why, for instance, hasn't the American Negro skin turned lighter now that he is in a colder place than Africa? For one thing, past changes took thousands of years, and there hasn't been enough time for major new changes to be noticed. But also, as man has learned to control his environment, he himself has had no need to change. A million years ago, if you could not tolerate the weather, you might die. Today, you can put on a raincoat, go inside, start a heater or an air conditioner. Come on. Scientists reason that races will probably continue to be of different colors for a very long time. Scientists also know that these differences are only skin deep. The brains, muscles, and bones of all races are pretty much the same. People may look different, but all over the world we share a common ancestor, a common physical makeup, common human experiences. Oh.